Hey, it's Metagosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we finished talking about Staphylococcus aureus. Today, we will turn our attention to Streptococcus species. It's time for an introduction and classification. And then next video, we'll talk about the characteristics, followed by diseases, how to diagnose, and how to treat. Let's go. This is my playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximal understanding. When you see in the news, flesh eating bacteria, whoo, they are basically talking about streptococcus pyogenes. Why? Because it can cause sepsis, cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis, as we have discussed in previous video. But these corporate shells are woke because Staph pyogenes is not the only flesh-eating bacteria. Why should we ignore Clostridium perfringens, for example? Let's answer the question of the previous video. Is Staph saprophyticus the most common cause of urinary tract infections? The answer is no. E. coli is the most common. Microbes are bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites. That's why microbiology studies bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. If it's a bacteria, use the gram stain. Gram positive or gram negative? Purple or pink? Okay, it was purple. Are streptococci considered to be cocci or bacilli? Of course they are cocci. They are spherical. Spherical like this. So let's go back to square one. Are you bacteria, virus, fungus, or parasites? I am bacteria. Are you gram positive or gram negative? I am gram positive, i.e. purple. Are you a coccus or a bacillus? I am a coccus. Are you catalase positive or catalase negative? I am catalase negative. I am your streptococcus. And we are arranged in chains. We are spherical, but we are arranged in chains like this. What do you mean that you are catalase negative? You cannot catalyze the reaction of converting hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Then after you realize that this is a streptococcus, the next question is, ask yourself about the hemolysis. Is it alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, or gamma hemolytic? What does that mean? Alpha hemolysis means partial hemolysis on the petri dish. How about beta? It means complete hemolysis. How about gamma hemolysis? It means no hemolysis. Partial, complete, or no hemolysis. Okay, I have caused partial hemolysis, all right? Then I look at the next question. Optokin is an antibiotic. Can optokin kill you? Yes, it can. I am sensitive to optokin. You are streptococcus pneumoniae. No, I'm resistant to optokin. You are streptococcus viridans. Oh, no, 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 no. I am beta hemolytic. I cause complete hemolysis. The next question is basitracin. Add basitracin. I was killed by basitracin. You are group A streptococcus. You are group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, to be specific, such as streptococcus pyogenes. No, I was not killed by basitracin. I resisted the doofus. You are group B, beta hemolytic streptococcus, such as streptococcus egalactiae. Hey, medicosis, I caused no hemolysis whatsoever. The next question is to ask, can you grow on 6.5% salt solution? Can you grow in the solution? Yes, of course, enterococcus. No, I cannot. Streptococcus bovis, that's the old name. The new name is streptococcus gallolyticus. Who named these things? Nomenclature, streptococcus. Why coccus? Because it's spherical. Why strepto? Because arranged in chains, like chicken strips. Microbiology is always related to the kitchen. When I say streptococcus pyogenes, what does pyogenes mean? Pyo means pus, gene from genesis, generation of pus. Oh, like cellulitis, like necrotizing fasciitis. Absolutely. How about Streptococcus egalactiae? A means no, galacti from galactose. Oh, lactose? Milk? Yeah. Egalactia, no milk? Mm hmm. Because Streptococcus egalactia cause cow mastitis, inflammation of the udder of the cow. The cow can secrete no milk. How about Streptococcus bovis? They used to call it bovis because bovine. Then they changed the name into Galoliticus because, as you know, when scientists have nothing to say, but they have to print a new textbook edition, they have to change the classification for some reason. And then they try to justify it. Galoliticus because it causes 
lysis lytic of methyl gallate. Who gives a rip? Bovis was better and easier. In humans, Streptococcus gallolyticus or bovis can cause bacteremia and colon cancer or any GI cancer. Very important for your exam. How about Streptococcus pneumoniae? That's easy. Pneumococci, they cause pneumonia. With consolidation, yeah. With dullness to percussion, increased tactile vocal fremitus, increased egophony, bronchophony, and whispering pictoroloquy, yes indeed. Why do you call it consolidation? Because the air has become solid. Consolidation. Do you remember the stages of pneumonia and the hepatization? Yep. Next we have Streptococcus mutans from mutation. Mutatis mutandis. Changing. Think of it as a Frankenstein dentist always mutating. This bacteria can cause dental caries. Before you know it, it can lead to bacteremia. And if you have a weak valve, like a cyanotic heart disease when you were young, like infective endocarditis, some bad rheumatic fever history, your dentist should prescribe antibiotics after invasive dental procedures. Because before you know it, the bacteremia will be on your heart valves. If your valves are healthy, don't worry about it. If your valves are weak, it can be a problem. Why do you say that if my valves are healthy, I should not worry about it? Because this is a weak bacteria unlike Staph aureus. Remember, Staph aureus can cause acute bacterial endocarditis, but Streptococcus mutans will give you subacute bacterial endocarditis. Big difference. Please refer to previous videos. Next, Streptococcus mitis. They called it mitis because they thought it only caused mild disease, but that's not true. It can actually cause bacteremia and subacute bacterial endocarditis. Just remember the mighty heart, the mighty mitis, the mighty endocardium, the mighty valve, etc. Next, Streptococcus sui or suis. Look at how many S's here. Lots of C and S. Oh, you mean encephalitis, meningitis? Yes, and streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, not to be confused with staph toxic shock syndrome, which was caused by staph toxic shock syndrome toxin number one. That's why I said watch these videos in order, please. What's encephalitis? Inflammation of the actual brain tissue. Meningitis, inflammation of the coverings that surround the brain and the spinal cord. All of these streptococci are gram-positive. Cocci lacking endospores, they are catalase negative. Can we take a look at the viridans? Yeah, it's alpha hemolytic. What does that mean? Partial hemolysis. What do you mean, medicosis? Get my strep viridans bacteria. Okay, throw it on a petri dish. All right, just wait. It will show you this green hemolysis around the bacterial colonies. Oh, this is kind of a small partial green hemolysis. Yeah, it's not the complete beta hemolysis. This is just partial. It appears green as you see. That's why they called it viridans from verd or vert, which means green. Does anyone remember biliverdin, which will become unconjugated bilirubin? Man, go read the book. So the viridans and the streptococcus pneumoniae are alpha hemolytic partial hemolysis. However, Streptococcus pyogenes and A. galactiae are beta hemolytic. And here is quiz time. Why is Streptococcus pyogenes beta hemolytic? Let me know the answer in the comments. You'll find the correct answer in the next video. We're not done yet. We gotta classify Streptococci. We have three modes of classification. You can classify them based on serology. Serum means serum. And algae means the study of, the study of serum, your serum that is, or based on their hemolysis. Are they alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, or gamma hemolytic? And you can classify them based on biochemical and physiological tests. The biochemical tests depend on the physiological properties of the bacteria. Tell me about the serological classification. This is Rebecca Lansfield classification. Thank you, Becky. Becky classified the streptococci into group A, group B, group C, group D, E, F, G, all the way until group W. Bless her heart. The second classification is by hemolysis, alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, or gamma hemolytic. You already know this. And the third classification is biochemical tests, 
which depend on the physiological properties of the streptococci. Be very careful. When I say group A beta hemolytic streptococci, notice I used two classifications. From this classification, I recognize that Streptococcus pyogenes is group A, and from this classification, I recognize that Streptococcus pyogenes is beta hemolytic. Lump them together, you can call it group A beta hemolytic Streptococci or simply Streptococcus pyogenes, which is beta hemolytic, basic trace insensitive. You can devise your own classification, make it easy, use a combination of different classifications. So you can divide them into beta hemolytic and everything else. Beta hemolytic streptococci, all right, I know it's beta hemolytic. Then what? Then use Rebecca Lansfield classification. Is it group A? Oh, that's streptococcus pyogenes. It could be group B, that's Streptococcus agalactia, etc. Anything that's not beta hemolytic can be called, collectively, very dense group streptococci. So very dense group is not just one bacteria. It's not one type of bacteria, it is many types. Anything that's alpha hemolytic or gamma hemolytic, anything that's not beta hemolytic is very dense. Let's review some beta hemolytics. The most important is Streptococcus pyogenes, and this is group A. The second most important is Streptococcus agalactiae, and this is group B, beta hemolytic, of course. Then we have group C, which is Streptococcus dysgalactiae, difficulty with milk. Yeah, this means difficulty, galactiae is milk. And then groups F and G, we call them angiosis and dysgalactiae again. Streptococcus pyogenes, this is the land of strep throat, this is the land of scarlet fever, Skin infections such as impetigo, erysipelas, cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis, etc. It's also the land of rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Please refer to my nephrology playlist. I have a video about post streptococcal acute glomerulonephritis. Next, Streptococcus agalactiae. Group B? Yes, group B. For B, remember baby, because it can lead to neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, and neonatal pneumonia. It can also lead to other diseases, not just in neonates, but in adults too. It can colonize the perineal area of the mother, and before you know it, vertical transmission from the mother to the baby. Next, dysgalactiae, in cows, difficulty producing milk, in humans, pharyngitis and nephritis. How about angiosis, abscess? Master your etymology like it's nobody's business. Pause and review. You need to memorize every single word in the slide. Streptococcus pyogenes, pyo means pus, pharyngitis, all right? Pharyngitis plus rash is called scarlet fever, which is more severe than pharyngitis. And then I get skin infections such as impetigo. Since streptococcus is coagulase negative, unlike staph, it can spread because no one will coagulate it in place. It will keep spreading and spreading and spreading. You'll get erysipelas, wider and deeper cellulitis, wider and deeper necrotizing fasciitis. Go to my blood, sepsis, bang. And then we have some immunological reactions, molecular mimic reaction, rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Rheumatic fever is many things, including the heart, pancarditis to be specific, endocardium is affected, myocardium is affected, pericardium is affected, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a nephritic syndrome. Please be careful, if I started with strep throat, pharyngitis, it can become rheumatic fever or post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, but if I started with skin infection, I can only get post streptococcal glomerulonephritis Never rheumatic fever. Why is this medicosis? We'll talk about that in the next video. This was Streptococcus pyogenes or group A. How about group B, Streptococcus agalactiae? Remember neonatal sepsis meningitis pneumonia, viridans, the dentist, and endocarditis. Don't forget Streptococcus mutants and Streptococcus mitis too, the mighty heart and the mutant Frankenstein dentist. Enterococci, entero, all right, I am in the blood, endocarditis, and I can also lead to urinary tract infections. How about bovis, that's the old name, today they call it galolyticus. 
human bacteremia, human GI cancers, including colon cancer. Let's review the diseases caused by Streptococcus pyogenes from the website that I like, Picmonic. Let's go! Streptococcus pyogenes. Here is the pyo, pi, genie. All kinds of pus action. Pharyngitis. Here is pharaoh. Impetigo. Here is the tiger. Cellulitis. Here is the cell phone. Toxigenic. Oh, not by the bacteria, but by the bacterial toxins, such as what? Toxic shock like syndrome, which is similar to staph but not identical to the staph toxic shock syndrome. And then we have scarlet fever, which is the fever beaver with the strawberry tongue and circumoral pallor. This is pharyngitis plus rash, as you know. Then we have immunological diseases, such as rheumatic fever and post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The mechanism behind rheumatic fever is probably molecular mimicry with the streptococcal M protein, which will be discussed later. We talked about the difference between staph and strep before. Staph has staphylokinase, which is fibrinolysis. Strep has streptokinase, which is also a fibrinolysin. We can use this for identification. Staph has staphylothrombin, coagulase positive. Strep does not. Strep is coagulase negative. That's why this is empty. However, streptococcus has hemolysin or streptolysin. Staph does not. And you will make antibodies against streptolysin O. What do you call these antibodies? Anti-streptolysin O. ASO antibodies? That's true. You know what else? You can make antibodies against DNAs of streptococci. Anti-DNAs antibodies? Yes, indeed. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Pause and review. It's time to take you to the next level by mastering pharmacology. Download my antibiotics course today at medicosisperfectionalis.com and learn about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. You'll get to download my Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook, one humongous PDF files with my handwritten antibiotics notes, and a mind map to help you memorize those drugs. Or you can try my brand new surgery high yields course and my emergency medicine high yields course. All of these premium courses are available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. And you can get a 50% discount towards any of these courses by using discount code ARDS at checkout. It's gonna disappear soon, so use it or lose it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.